give you a few more minutes. So if you haven't answered yet, that's fine. Um, but it's about binomial random variables. You have a new notation that I don't think we've seen yet, which is this little funny symbol equals. Uh, you might want to say x equals binomial, but x is a random variable. Uh, it, you know, there's a definition of a random variable. And a binomial is a distribution. So you don't want to say they're equal. That's why we use this little thing. And I'll tell you exactly what it means on the blackboard here. So uh, this is a new notation. Oh, this is my other class. Look, they were also doing probabilities. See? See? I think there's a Bayes theorem. If we scroll up a bit, there's a Bayes theorem. There's Bayes theorem. OK, anyway, so if you, if you do well in this class, then you can go take data science when you're a graduate student. OK, um, what, what am I, why am I here? I want to actually make a new, a new board. OK, uh, a new board. And we have this new definition, which is what does uh, this mean? And this means, uh, this is, means a random variable is distributed like a distribution. Uh, so specify, specify the distribution, distribution of a random variable. So if I say X is binomial and P, that means the probability that X equals X is the binomial probability. Uh, binomial, binomial probability. Uh, that is, the binomial probability is what, which one is that in R? That's a P binom, is that P binom? To get the probability? No, E binom. E binom? E binom is cumulative. Ah, okay, so, okay, hold on. This is E binom. D, D binom. Or, you know, equivalently, maybe you want, uh, you want to say the probability that X is less than or equal to X, that is the P binom. P binom of n p uh, that's in in r uh, in this case i can also write the formula yes where you put d binomial d is in dog oh d binom okay good good to know there we go d binom d binom what on earth could d and d binom stand for what does it stand for pardon what does the d stand for it's actually coming from density function ah oh, i see okay density. okay <laughs> very very sneaky okay um, in this case we have a formula so I could also write the probability that x equals x equals uh, n choose x times p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x. And that's for x in uh, this set, 0, 1, all the way up to n. So n plus 1 possible values. That's what it means. So now you know a new thing. Today's class is going to have quite a few new definitions. What does this little symbol mean? And so don't get mixed up. X is a random variable. A random variable has probabilities. And I'm telling you what the probabilities are. Is there a question at the back, maybe? OK, so now let's go to the mathematized question, which says you have x and you have y, right? So I have an x and a y, and I add them together. So adding them together is something you can do with random variables. And the question is, is x plus y a type of binomial random variable? And if so, what are its parameters? That's what we want to get to. And so I started you off with, is, is it a binomial always, sometimes, or never? OK, and I'll let you think one more minute and take your best stab at what you know about these things and if they're binomial. And then we'll go from there. OK, one minute to think. Yeah, question. Um, later. Yes. We'll see. I don't know. You'll get them at a random time. Okay, yeah. So which the definition? Yes. Yeah, I can put the, the blackboard back up. So still answer the question. There's the blackboard. Okay, time's almost up. Put in your guesses. It's always, sometimes, or never. So, you know, you, you can only go so wrong. You could just take a guess, and we're going to find out. 
Uh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna do the thing. First, let's find out, is everybody all together? Uh, labels hidden. So out of 77 people, 44 people are in question mark. 27 people are in question mark. What are they in? 44 people said always. 27 people said sometimes. Six people said never. Uh, so just over half the class is in always. Somewhat medium-sized majority. Uh, this is one of those cases where the majority is wrong. The answer is sometimes. Uh, sometimes. There is a super secret special word, a special property that x and y need to have for x plus y to be binomial. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, let me start by telling you why it's not always true. Let me give an example. Uh, here's an example where it's just plainly false. Let's see if I can get the blackboard back. Uh, so this is an example, an example where uh, x is binomial, uh, y is binomial, but x plus y is not binomial for any, for any amount of parameters. Uh, so not for any values, I'll say for any params. So here's the example, set y equals x. So if x is exactly the same as y, I have two random variables, there's x and there's y, I gave them two names, but it's actually the same random variable, right? They're exactly the same thing. If x equals y, then, uh, you know, let's say and x is on its own binomial, then both x and y, are they binomial? Is x binomial? Yes. Is y binomial? Well, what does it mean to check? You check the probabilities. Well, if x equals y, the probabilities of y are the same as the probabilities of x. y is also binomial. So yes, x is binomial. Yes, y is binomial. Uh, they're both binomial, but x plus y is just two times x, two times x. And two times x is definitely not a binomial random variable. How do I know two times x is not binomial? Two times x is always even. This is always even. And binomial random variables have a chance of being odd and a chance of being even. Uh, something that is always even is definitely not a binomial random variable. So the probability that this thing equals one is zero. Uh, binomials have a non-zero chance of being equal to one. So this thing is uh, a silly example. You might say, hey, that's kind of cheating. You, you kind of made them the same. You said you gave them two names, but they're actually the same. Uh, but this is something that can happen. So you gotta be careful in math to meet the terms and conditions. Um, so what we need is an extra, an extra term and condition. So there's going to be a theorem today, and it's going to say, if x is binomial and y is binomial, and, and, and this is the part that is missing, and what? x and y are something, then x plus y is binomial. And not only will x plus y be binomial, I can even tell you the parameters. The parameters are going to be 2n comma p, 2n comma p. So that's the theorem that we're going to prove. Um, we're just missing the idea that goes here, the missing condition that I didn't put in the mathematize. That's why the answer was sometimes. If you have the condition, they do add. If you don't have the condition, they don't add. Uh, so let's think, what is the condition? Did I make a, a question for this? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me give you guys one minute to think. Think if you can think of the guess. There's a one word answer that goes here. X and Y are, are blank. And it's something we've done before. See if you can guess what it is. I'll give you one minute to think. And feel free to chat with your neighbors and see what goes in that box. How is it related? What is the definition of the binomial? What do you need uh, for these things to work? And to rule out silly stuff like this.
Okay, let's come back. So x and y, we need this extra condition. What is the extra condition? Does anyone want to take a stab at what is the extra condition? Someone who thinks they know? Yeah. Uh, independent. independent. That is the right thing. Independent. Uh, if you're confused, you're like, wait, I didn't know we did that. Independent. Did I spell it right? Probably not. Independent. It's close. OK, that's close oh, enough. That's right. Maybe even correct. Uh, earlier in the course, we talked about what it means for two events to be independent. And it turns out random variables can also be independent. So this is the new definition. What does it mean for two random variables to be independent? So x and y are independent. Are independent means, and of course it's something in terms of what we learned earlier of the events being independent. And if you watch the video, you remember that x and y random variables, random variables are actually like a bucket of events all scooped together. So the random variable x, you can think of it as x equals x is an event, and this thing is for many possible values of x. For many values of x. So the random variable capital X is actually generating this big sequence of events, x equals 1, x equals 2, whatever the values it can take, those are the events that make up capital X. So a random variable is like a fancy way to write down a big sequence of events. And same for y. So uh, y equals lowercase y, that's a sequence of events uh, for many values of y. And those are the events that sort of make up capital X and Y. So what does it mean for two random variables, X and Y, to be independent? Well, we have this big collection of events that go with either of them. Those events better be independent events. And so it means this thing and this thing are independent, are independent events. So this is how we upgrade the definition of an independent event into independent random variables. Uh, so let's say independent random variables. Let's add that right in. And this needs to be true not only for some of these. So here I wrote for many and for many. Let me be really crystal clear and say for all. For all. It needs to be true for all. If there's even a single x value or lowercase y value where it doesn't work, then the random variables x and y are not independent. Saying that they're independent random variables means these are independent always. And to quickly remind you, what does it mean? This means. This means independent was this thing, that the probability of A given B was equal to the probability of A. That was for independent events. Uh, in the events. So knowing that B happens does not help you understand if A is more likely to happen or less likely to happen. The probability A happens is the same as the probability of A happening given that B happens. So B doesn't help you understand whether or not uh, A happened. And it's the same thing for Random variables. So the probability that x equals x, given that y equals y, is equal to the probability that x equals x. So if you want to know the chances of x coming up on the x random variable, what you know about y will not affect your probabilities. The conditional probability is the same as the original thing. So that's what it means to be independent. And this has to work for every x and y. Uh, who here is taking math 1200, the calculus? Do you guys know what this symbol means? Did they tell you the cool? And this one? This one? OK, so if you guys are in the cool kid club, you can, we can replace for every with an upside down A for all x and y. Uh, so this is an example of a for all statement. This has to be true for all values of x and y. OK, so that's the definition of independent. Yeah. What are the where? What are the N and P? Oh, N and P in the binomial. Yes, OK, this is a good point. Uh, N and P are sort of parameters that tell you which binomial distribution we're talking about. So uh, and we in the last few classes, we came to this formula, which is in terms of N and P. So if you want, I've written down a lot of different formulas. For every N and P, there's one formula. And I want this thing to be equal to that formula for that N and P. I'm going to make another definition of this binomial in a second, and maybe that will also clear it up. Okay, so what do you, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, so A equals 2N and then P. 
Yeah. Right, so, so n and p are, n is a number, n is a number, and p is between 0 and 1. And this is saying if you take a random, an x, which is binomial with parameter n and p, and a y, which is parameter n and p, and their independence, then when you add them, you get a new binomial with parameters 2n and p. Yeah. And we'll, I'm going to do the proof in quotes of this in a, in a minute, so maybe it'll also be more clear there. But yeah, this is, this is actually, this seems like I'm just saying one thing, but I'm actually saying infinitely many things, right? I'm saying something about every n value and every p value. Uh, that's a good point. OK, any other questions or comments? OK, so that's the definition of independent. And now let's try to prove uh, this theorem, uh, this theorem, that adding up two binomials gives you another binomial. Actually, we never gave a definition of this binomial random variable. It, you could prove this only from this formula. So you could take this formula and you say, you use this formula, you know they're independent, you do a lot of work, and you calculate the probability that x plus y equals something, uh, and you would eventually get a proof. So you can make a very hard proof that only uses the formulas that we have so far. But I'm going to give you a nicer definition of this binomial in terms of independence. So now that we know independence, here is the definition of a binomial. This is like the math person definition, uh, the definition of a binomial. So uh, x is binomial np. Before, the definition just said in terms of probabilities. But now I'm going to write when, and I'm going to do yet another new notation for you, which is an equal sign with a d, a d equals. This is equal in distribution, equal in distribution. And this means that the random variable on the left has the same distribution as the random variable on the right. Uh, so a binomial random variable, what is it equal to? Now I'm talking about random variables. Before I was talking about distributions, the formula was for the probability of x. And now I'm talking about the random variable itself. This is the distinction. So you always got to keep these two universes sort of separated in your mind. And the, the formula is i1 plus i2 plus dot 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 plus i n. So it's the sum of n things where, what are the n things? Where the i i's are all independent, are all independent. OK, so they're all independent. And each one of them has probability p of being 1. There's a bunch of ways you could write it. I like to write it like this. I, uh, let, me, let me call them i k. I k. I write it like this. Uh, it's 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p. Uh, this sentiment that ik has, it's either 1 or 0, and the probabilities are p and 1 minus p, there are many different ways you could write it. This is one way. Another way you could say it's 1 or 0, and then you could write down the probability it equals 1. Um, but this is a, a nice way people write these things, so I thought I'd show you as well. Um, this is exactly the definition we had before in words, but now it's written in terms of math. This is how you would find it in like a math textbook, uh, a pure math textbook with proofs and such. Uh, any questions or comments about this? So the i's are all independent. You add up n independent things, that gives you the x. Is this your notebook? Yes. Yeah, no problem. Uh, OK. Uh, all right. That's what we saw. Um, I'll make one more little remark, is the eyes have a name. Uh, the eyes are called, they have a cool name. They're called Bernoulli random variables. Bernoulli random variables. Uh, who was Bernoulli? Uh, Bernoulli was some, some German guy like 200 years ago. Uh, actually, I think he had a lot of brothers who also did math. So I don't know which Bernoulli it is. There's like seven Bernoullis. Um, but this Bernoulli guy, He's so famous that this thing that is either 1 or 0 is named after him. Uh, sometimes they're also called indicator. Um, so this kind of random variable is sometimes called Bernoulli and sometimes called indicator random variables. That's why I did I, indicator random variables. So anything that is either 1 or 0 is sometimes called an indicator. OK. And if this is my definition of a binomial, I'm going to use the definition to prove in like one line, very simply, that this adding thing actually works. But uh, let me take some questions first. Yeah. Can you just explain again what's the i? Yeah, the i is a, so i is a random variable. And 
Uh, when I wrote this, I was trying to tell you which random variable it is. But let me, let me say it one more time. So i, it's the random variable, is equal to 0 or 1. And the probability that i k equals 1 is p. And the probability that i k equals 0 is 1 minus p. So the thing in the blue box and the thing in the green box mean exactly the same thing. And then there's some random variable, and I'm telling you exactly what it is. So I'm telling you, this is the random variable that comes out with 1 sometimes, and it comes out with 0 sometimes. And I've even told you the exact probabilities of each thing. So if you like, this is a full specification of the distribution of i. And the fact that they're all independent tells you how they all play together. Yes, it's exactly the same. So the interpretation is that i k is the, let me say it one more time, over here in purple, it's i k is equal to uh, 1 if the kth, let me write it out like this, 1 if the kth coin flip is heads. So we said before that the binomial is you flip n coins, and then you count the number of heads. And I have split up the coin flips into the first coin flip, the second coin flip, the third coin flip, and so on, all the way up to the nth coin flip. And it's 1 if it comes up heads, and it's 0 if it comes up tails. So each i counts a specific coin flip, the third coin flip. i3 is counting the third coin flip. Is it heads or tails? And by adding them all together, that gives me the total number of heads, which is x, the binomial. So it's binomial as long as each coin flip is independent. It's binomial as long as each coin flip is independent, and each coin flip has probability p of coming up heads. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. So this, uh, this should connect exactly with the, the coin flip. This is the math version of the coin flip picture, um, now said a few different ways. But these are the math ingredients, are the independence and the distribution of each coin flip individually. Those are the math ingredients that come together. Yeah, great question. Very good to clarify. Uh, anyone else? OK, so now let's quote unquote prove the theorem. It's not like a full proof, but just to give you the idea, uh, if x is binomial and y is binomial, then uh, let's prove the theorem. So we're going to do proof. We're going to do a proof now. Proof, and proof is in quotes. It's really like a proof sketch that uh, uh, some people would say this a uh, sum of independent independent binomials is still binomial. Binomials is still binomial. Uh, OK, that's like the theorem that we did earlier. So this theorem. So in this theorem, x and y are binomials. And therefore, we can write x equals i1 plus i2 plus dot, 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 plus i n. And I'm going to have i's for the x's and i's for the y's. So I need to kind of distinguish them. So how am I going to distinguish them? Why don't I uh, uh, add a little superscript x? So you know these are the i's that go with x. So i, uh, actually, let me even put a, a bracket around it. So to try to not confuse, maybe that'll confuse people more. But OK, i, x, uh, k means the indicator random variable that goes with x. So those are the ones from the x's. Uh, y is the one that comes from the uh, y's. Uh, let's do those in a different color. These are the y ones, plus i2, plus dot, 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 plus i n, plus y. Uh, so the i, k's, or the y, those are some other ones. And all of these individually are exactly the type of random variable I said before. They're Bernoulli p's. Uh, so I can see where all i are Bernoulli p's. Bernoulli p's. Uh, I'll, I'll write it one more time. i k, it's 1 with probability p. And it's uh, 0 with probability 1 minus p. OK, so there you go. Um, and now here's the thing. If x, is in, if x and y are independent, then we can arrange so that the i x's and the i y's are independent. Uh, this is where you need the condition. In the example I gave, it could be that i x 1 equals i y 1, right? Or maybe they're like a rearranged version of the other one or something. But if the x's and y's are independent, which is in part of the, the if part of the theorem, then we can make sure that these are independent as well. So if, I'll say since x, y are independent, uh, and I'm going to say can arrange or can make sure that the other ones are independent as well. Can arrange 
I uh, x is I x is and I y is to be independent as well. Okay. In depth, I'm going to say in depth for independent too. So they're also independent. Um, and once the once you know all of these things are independent, now you could really just add them. So therefore, adding them shows you that x plus y equals, and it's the sum of two n things now. So there's n things at the beginning, dot 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 plus i n, and then there's another n things at the end. The first n come from the x's, and the second come from the y's, but it's a sum of two n things, uh, and all these are independent. So those are independent. And that is the definition of a Bernoulli with two n parameters. X plus y is, or not a Bernoulli, a binomial with two n parameters, two np. So that's the proof. Um, and we really haven't done much in this proof. We've just pushed around definitions, but uh, it's saying, you know, you have independent inputs and you combine them, you get the right thing, which is the binomial. So that's the proof. And that answers the first mathematized question. But secretly, all I wanted to do was tell you guys about independence and uh, uh, the, the math definition of a binomial. Um, okay, any questions or comments about that uh, proof or any of that? Okay, um, I will say we've been kind of using this independence thing. We just saw the definition now, but we used it uh, yesterday as well. So the R binome, this is a remark, the R binome in R also does independent things. So R binome function in R outputs independent independent draws uh, in depth dot being a uh, draw. So when you use the R binome package, not only do you get a sequence of binomials, but they are independent. And this is how independence comes about in practice. A lot of times, you know the distribution of each thing individually, like you know you want X to be binomial and you know you want Y to be binomial and you have some method to generate them and then you can do all sorts of things with them once they're generated. Uh, so uh, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just stop there. So uh, I'll say uh, in practice, this is commonly how it's created. So you kind of stay by fiat. I want these things to be independent and I want them to be individually like this and then they get generated for you. In practice, this is how they are made. So in other words, you're not normally given X and Y and you have to discover if they're independent. You're given X individually, you're given Y individually, and you are told that they are independent, and then you can do stuff with them, just like we did in the problem. Okay, uh, I have one more important proposition. Uh, I guess, you know what? I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, crazy today. Let's make it a theorem, a theorem. Here's the theorem. If X and Y are independent, Then, so another fun theorem that starts with x and y being independent, and it tells you about the expected value, that was from the video, of x times y. What is the expected value of x times y? Um, and normally, if you know what x is doing and you know what y is doing, x times y could be some really weird thing. But if they're independent, then it kind of tells you in what ways the x's and the y's interact. And just like the probability, <laughs> was for independent events. Uh, when we had independent events, you might remember this formula for independent events. So this is you thinking back in time to earlier in the course when you were studying for the midterm. You might have been thinking, oh, what's the probability of A and B? <coughs> well, in general, the probability of A and B can be anything. But uh, if they're independent, it's the probability of A times the probability of B. That was part of the course. So if you have the expected value of x times y, that's kind of like an intersection. And in fact, if they're independent, this is equal to the product of the expected value of x times the expected value of y. And this is a nice property that is used. If you know things are independent, you can calculate a lot of the times by using formulas like this to calculate all sorts of complicated things. Uh, so that's a theorem. If they are independent, then the expected value of xy equals the expected value of x times the expected value of y. Uh, that's a nice theorem. Um, this theorem should have a name. Maybe it does. I don't know. Does this theorem have a name? Maybe not. <coughs> Questions or comments about the theorem? 
Here's another theorem for you. This theorem, this theorem comes with a question mark because I'm not sure if it's true or not. I'm going to ask you if it's true. Is the reverse true? Is the reverse, reverse true? So in other words, if they are independent, then it splits up like this. But what about the reverse? Because with probabilities, with events, it was the reverse, right? If it satisfied this, then they were definitely independent events. So it was a if and only if. Uh, but uh, let's ask ourselves, and in fact, I'm going to ask you, is the reverse true? If x and y are random variables and the expected value splits, then x and y are independent. So this is the reverse, the re I'm reversing the if part and the then part. Uh, some people call this the converse. Uh, is that true? True or false? OK, I'll give you one minute to think. Take your best guess. Feel free to chat with your neighbors, and then we will take it up. Okay, put in your, your guesses here of what you think, uh, and let's find out what you guys think. Is the reverse true? And like I said, for when we were doing independence with events, if you replace the E's with P's, and you think of multiplication as intersection, then the reverse was true. It was independent. That means the probability split in a certain way. And if the probability split that way, then it's independent. So for events and independence with events, it is true. What about for uh, expected values? For who? 48 to 27. Uh, 48 people out of 75, so a pretty good two-thirds majority is in true. And just like before, two-thirds of you are wrong. Uh, the correct answer is false. I didn't put it in. Uh, but the correct answer is false. This one is false. Is the reverse true? No. No. Uh, so in fact, this property, this property that the expected value of x times y equals the expected value of x times y, like this, this, mean, this, is, this has a name. And the name is uncorrelated. Uh, this is what it means for x and y to be uncorrelated. x, y, uncorrelated. Uh, you don't need to know this name, but it's just a fun, a fun name. Two R's. two R's and uncorrelated, I'm told. OK, correlated. So two variables being uncorrelated, they can be uncorrelated even if they're not independent. This theorem says if they're independent, then they're uncorrelated. The reverse is a non-theorem. It is not true. So if they're uncorrelated, you don't know whether or not they're independent. Let me give an example. And there are many examples one could come up with. Um, let's see. What's the easiest example? Let's, uh, let, me, let me do this one. Let's make x. That one will be a dice roll. A dice roll, a dice roll, um, so from one to six, one to six. So it has one in six chance to being one, two, three, four, five, or six. And I'm going to make a y equal to s times x, where s equals plus one half the time and minus one half the time. So here's my example. Um, so s is either plus one or minus one. S stands for sign, and it's a random sign. It's either plus one or minus one. And here's the point. X and Y, they are not the same random variable, but they have the same value. It's just that Y is sometimes negative. So sometimes Y is negative, and sometimes Y is positive. If you calculate the expected value of X times Y, you will see that this is the expected value of S times X squared. And this will be 0 because S is equally likely to be positive or negative, is equally likely to be positive or negative. 
So in this situation, x and y are uncorrelated. That's because when you multiply them together, this s thing, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. And when you do the calculation, you're going to have an equal number of positive and negative terms that exactly cancel out to give you 0. So they're uncorrelated. The expected value of x times y uh, is 0. Is that the, the same as the expected? Oh, yeah, and the expected value of y is, is, is also 0. Uh, so this thing is this. So the expected value of y is 0. They're uncorrelated. Um, but they are not independent. Why are they not independent? Uh, because the probability that x equals 6 given uh, y equals 6 is 100%, uh, which is not equal to the probability that x equals 6. So if somebody tells you, I know that the value of y equals 6, well, then you can be sure that the value of x is also 6, because x and y have exactly the same thing, except for y is possibly negative. Um, so when you do this kind of thing, you gain a lot of information about x. y tells you a lot about x. Uh, it's just that it tells you equally likely to be positive or negative. That's why they're uncorrelated. So not independent. So there is an example of two random variables that are uh, not independent, but they are uncorrelated. Um, I'll give you one more example. This was the one I originally had, but I thought maybe it's a little bit too complicated. And you guys can do it on your own. If you make x equal to i1 plus i2, and you make y equal to i1 minus i2, and these i's are these uh, Bernoulli's, are Bernoulli's, you will again find the same kind of situation uh, where the expected value of x times y is a difference of squares and it's mean 0. Uh, so the expected value of x times y is equal to 0 uh, and they're uncorrelated, but they're not independent. And why are they not independent? I will let you calculate some probabilities and figure out um, if they're independent or not. But it's the same kind of thing. You can really point to some event where if you know the value of x, you gain a lot of information about the value of y. Um, so that's another example. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. S. S is a random variable, which is either plus one or minus one. Ah, uh, this is so. This is true. If you want to do this, you need to roll a dice and flip a coin or something. So my probability space is this dice roll plus what S is. So you should think of I rolled the dice over here, I flipped a coin over here, and then I use the coin flip to decide S. And then I use the dice roll to decide x. And then by combining them, I created y. So this is like how mathematicians play with probability. You sort of can generate pieces from however you want. And you can combine them with whatever math formula you want. You can use them as formulas, just like uh, in any part of math where you use variables. And you can ask all sorts of funny questions. OK. Any other questions or comments? OK, so what have we done today? We started with. The definition of this little tilde thing, that's a good one to know. We had a big definition of what does independent mean. And independent random variables are defined in terms of independent events. And then we saw some theorems, right, of uh, what is a binomial in terms of independence. And then you can use this to prove things like uh, the sum of binomials and stuff like that. Um, uh, next class, I'm going to do this problem, which is calculate the square of a binomial. So let x be np and calculate the expected value of x squared. Um, but that will be next class. Uh, if you want to give it a go, and you're, I think you have everything you need to do this. So if you, if you want, pick n equals 2, and p equals, say, a half, and try it. Uh, that will be a good exercise for you uh, in understanding these things. If you can figure this one out, you're, you're uh, doing great. Otherwise, we'll do it together tomorrow, or on Wednesday. Uh, any other questions or comments? OK, in the last 10 minutes of class, we're going to try to return the, the, the test you did. Uh, so let's see how that goes. OK, uh, let me explain this. Um, on course link, you 